was definitely a huge surprise, that's for sure. Kristen Strobel never imagined that at 26 she'd get the scare of her life. I was reading my daughter's story and I was tucking her in and I had an itch on my chest and I felt this um, small like little marble it felt like a like a pea size lump on my chest. It was three years ago. She was a single mom at the time. She soon got the news she had breast cancer. She went through a year of chemo and had a double mastectomy. She didn't feel like herself or look like herself. You know, I'd pull on my hair and it would just come out in clumps. You don't realize how emotionally draining it is until you actually are going through it. That's when Kristen came here to Radiance, a family owned company in West Bloomfield that creates custom made wigs and hair pieces. They walked her through the process of getting a duplication wig. They sit you in this chair, your family's in here and they just shave your head right in this chair. It was like taking control over the situation and what was happening. That same day she left with a wig. It looked just like me. So as a way to give back to the community during Breast Cancer Awareness Month, Radiance is giving away one of their custom made wigs for free. They're asking recently diagnosed cancer patients to write in and share their story. At the end of this month, they'll pick one woman and create a wig just for her. We're going to select a woman uh, to duplicate her color her style, her density, everything. This is the room where the wigs are handmade by a team of eight people. The wigs are created using human hair, synthetic hair, or a combination of both, and it takes anywhere from 40 hours to 80 hours to make just one wig. Strobel says she loves the idea that someone will be getting one of these wigs as a gift. She is now married and cancer-free and knows what a difference that custom-made wig made for her. The wig itself really made me feel more confident with who I was and made me feel like I was going to make it. In West Bloomfield, a new Prakash 7 Action News. The ruins of Detroit can be seen all over the city. This is St. Agnes Catholic Church on the near west side. It's been closed for some 20 years. It's symbolic of what the city is going through today. It isn't an option to, 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 that this city is going to die in a few years. I don't think so, but, but, but what is the solution? He's in Detroit for a week doing research for a documentary for the Swedish version of public TV. He says Detroit is a story that needs to be seen. That's reality, unfortunately. You can't sugarcoat it. But uh, when, when you hit rock bottom, there is only one way up, hopefully. I think we're heading in that direction. For those of us in the city in the metro area, there are prayers and hope. The city can indeed see better days on the other side of bankruptcy. On the west side, Jim Kurtzner, 7 Action News. Chef Michael Simon is back in the D dishing out cooking tips. I take the dressing and I don't put it on the greens, I put it around the outside of the bowl. And his love for the Motor City. People are very friendly, they're very supportive, they're incredibly proud of their city. I like to just kind of give it a touch with my hands, but you could do it with tongs or a spoon. This Iron Chef is here to host the Greening of Detroit Gala tonight at Roast. He stopped by for a cooking demo at Greening's Farm near Eastern Market, where food grows year-round, supplying local restaurants and helping those in need. I think the Green Detroit is really one of the coolest things I've seen anywhere in the country, <laughs> where they're taking land that was disregarded or buildings that were disregarded, and they're turning it into magical things like this, where they make food. To me, food is always been and always will be the magical ingredient. It brings people together, it rallies communities, um, and, and there's an incredible sense of pride in, in growing it. And he also plans to grow his business in Metro Detroit. Most of the time, the, the comments I've always got are, are you going to do more here? Or, when, when's the next thing going to open? So I think that there's been just a, a mutual love and a mutual respect for, from us to, to the people that live in Detroit and, and the, the Cleveland kids because um, they know how much we love their city and unbashedly support it um, on a national level. He plans to open B-Spot Burgers in Rochester Hills in the next few months, so plan on seeing more of him, his famous food, and that signature laugh. <laughs> <laughs> in Detroit, a new Prakash 7 Action News. I don't know how she can sleep at night knowing that she's done this to me. And now six months later, Mattel says she still hasn't gotten her money back. I would warn anyone that was considering doing business with her to stay clear. Mattel filed a police report, but she is not the only one. I tried emailing her, calling, never received a response. She owes me over $4,000 for this trip. How many police reports have been filed so far? Well, we're well over 100, uh, close to 125 at this point.